I think there's something to be said for the pride and joy you get from a DIY job done right. When it comes to DIY tasks on the PlayStation 2, building your own free McBoot card is not only highly satisfying, but it's easy to do. Grab your PlayStation 2 and fire up your PC because you're about to learn something new. Here's the list of parts you'll need to get this done, and I have these linked for you in the video description. First, you'll need a writable DVD-R disk. You'll need a way to write an ISO image file to that disk. If your computer doesn't have a built-in optical disk writer, you'll need something like this external USB disk writer shown here. You'll need a USB-A type flash storage drive, and you'll need a PS2 memory card with at least 8 megabytes of storage capacity. I recommend using an official Sony Magic Gate branded card if possible. This process works with both the fat and slim PlayStation 2 models. However, not every model of PlayStation 2 and its DVD driver are compatible. Start by powering on your PlayStation 2 and pressing the triangle button at the main menu. The screen gives you key information about your model number of your PlayStation 2 and the version information for your DVD drive. In this case, I'm using a 39,000 model fat PlayStation 2, and for the DVD firmware, it's version 2.12U. Make note of this information on your own PlayStation 2 before proceeding forward. Next up, visit the free DVD boot compatibility list. I have it linked for you in the video description. Scroll down on this page until you see the listing for the model of your PlayStation 2. In this case, it's a fat model 39001. Follow the row with your PlayStation 2 model all the way over to the right. This column will tell you whether or not the combination of your PlayStation 2 model and your DVD firmware will work with this process. In this case, the combination of the FAT Model 39001 and the 2.12U firmware for the DVD drive are compatible with free DVD boot. Be sure your model of PlayStation 2 and DVD firmware are compatible before proceeding. All of the downloads that you need for this project are linked in the video description. The first download is free DVD boot and it's hosted on GitHub. There are three different versions of free DVD boot, so make sure you choose the correct one. The first download is only for DVD drives with firmware version 3.04. The middle one is for all versions of the PS2 Slim. And the third one is for versions of the PS2 Fat with DVD firmware version 2.10 through 2.12. Click on the version that matches your DVD drive firmware. This takes you to the download page for the free DVD boot version that matches your DVD drive's firmware. Scroll down just a bit on the page and you'll see a download button on the right side. Click this button to download free DVD boot to your computer. You'll need a way to burn free DVD boot onto a DVD-R disk. I'm a big fan of Image Burn for this task. On the Image Burn website, click the Download Now button on the left side of the page. In the center of the next page, click on the link that says Download Softpedia Mirror, shown here. This downloads the latest version of Image Burn to your computer. To install Free McBoot to a PlayStation 2 memory card, you're going to need to download Free McBoot. This downloads hosted on the PS2 home website. Scroll down on this page until you see the yellow highlighted word download. Directly underneath it, you'll see the link to download the latest version of the Free McBoot software. You'll need to format a USB drive in FAT32 format. If you're planning to use a drive larger than 32 gigabytes, you'll need to use a tool like GUI Format. It's linked for you in the video description and a free download. Just click the big picture right in the middle of the website to grab the latest version of GUI Format. Let's deal with each of these downloads one at a time. Open up the Downloads folder inside File Explorer. The first task we should take care of is to install Image Burn. Inside your Downloads folder, locate the executable file for Image Burn. Double click on it and at the UAC prompt, click on Yes to continue. Follow the on-screen instructions to install Image Burn. Once you're done with the installation, click on Finish. With the installation complete, you can delete the executable file out of your Downloads folder. Let's go ahead and fire up Image Burn for the first time. Click on Windows Start, locate Image Burn in the Start menu, and then click on it to launch it. From the main menu of Image Burn, click on Write Image File to Disk. Insert a blank DVD-R disk into your DVD writer. Once Image Burn recognizes your blank disk, click this folder icon to access your Downloads folder. You'll see the ISO file that you need to copy over to Image Burn. Double click on it to select it. This next step is super important, so don't gloss over this. You want to burn the disk at the slowest possible speed that your DVD writer supports. By default, your disk write speed is set to AWS for automatic write speed. If you click on this, you'll see the list of choices for the various speeds that you can select. In this case, this particular DVD writer can go all the way down to single speed. The slower you burn the disk, the more likely your PlayStation 2 will be able to read it. Once you have all of these options configured, hover over the right icon on the bottom left corner of the screen and click to burn the disk. Image Burn will write the disk and verify the contents for you. Just be aware that if you have a manually operated disk tray like I do, you'll have to manually push the disk back into the burner between the write and verification processes. 
Once the disk has been written and verified, you'll see a confirmation message on screen. Click OK to continue. If you're done with Image Burn, you can click in the top right corner to close it out. Navigate back to your Downloads folder inside File Explorer. From here, you can delete the .iso format file because you've already burned it to a DVD. And remember, files that are deleted are still archived in your recycle bin. Premic Boot software is delivered in .7z format. You'll need a plugin in order to extract this as Windows does not natively support .7z formatted files. I use Zipware. It's free, it's open source, and I have it linked for you in the video description. Quick note here, make sure to extract this archive into a subfolder, otherwise you're going to have a downloads folder full of clutter. Once you have the 7z file extracted, delete it out of your downloads folder. That's going to leave GUI format in the Freemic Boot software. This next step is optional, but I feel like it makes life a little easier when you get over to the PS2. I'm going to rename this folder FMCB just to give it a shorter, more concise name. Insert the USB drive into the computer that you plan to use with your PlayStation 2. Make note of the drive letter assigned to this drive by Windows. Once you've verified the drive letter, close that File Explorer window. Back in your Downloads folder, go ahead and launch the GUI format software, and at the UAC control prompt, click Yes to continue. Before you try to do anything with GUI format, make sure that you've closed out all open instances of File Explorer first. Okay, you definitely don't want to format the wrong drive here, so take a look in the top left corner and click on the Drive Selection drop-down. Select the letter that corresponds with your USB drive. In this case, it's Drive Letter G. Come down to the bottom of the window and click Start, and at the confirmation prompt that appears, click on OK. This will format your USB storage drive in FAT32 format. Once your drive's been formatted, click Close in the bottom right corner of the window. Open your Downloads folder again in File Explorer. From here, you can either delete GUI format or archive it somewhere else on your computer. In this case, I already have it backed up elsewhere, so I'll just delete it out of the Downloads folder. Next up, let's copy the Freemook Boot software over to your newly formatted USB drive. Right-click on the folder and pick Copy. Navigate to your newly FAT32 formatted USB storage device. In this case, Drive G. Double-click to access the root of your USB storage device. From here, right-click and select Paste to paste the Freemig Boot folder directly onto the root. You are done with your computer. Go ahead and close out any instances of File Explorer, remove the USB drive from your computer, then remove the DVD disk from the burner. With your PS2 powered off, plug in the USB drive into one of the two available USB ports, plug in a controller, and plug in the memory card into the leftmost memory card slot on your system. Power on your PlayStation 2, and then insert the free DVD boot disk that you just burned inside your computer. Your PS2 should recognize and load this disc just like it would any commercial PlayStation 2 disc. Once it does, you'll be taken to an application that's called ULaunch Elf. Make note that the controls inside ULaunch Elf shift to circle for select and triangle to go back. Press the circle button of the controller to open the file browser. You'll be presented with a list of storage locations for your PlayStation 2. Use the D-pad to move the red highlight down from MC0 to Mass. That represents the Mass storage or your USB drive. Press the circle button to select it. You'll see the folder stored on the root of your USB storage, in this case the one labeled FMCB. Select it with the circle button to drill into this folder. Inside the subfolder you'll see a series of files, one of which is called fmcbinstaller.elf. Use the D-pad to move the red highlight down to this file and select it with the circle button to launch it. This opens up the Freemic Boot Installer which we'll use to install Freemic Boot to your memory card. From here forward, the controls revert back to normal, in this case, X to select and circle to go back. The highlight should already be hovering over Install, selected with the X button. You'll be notified that Freemic Boot will be installed to the memory card in slot 1, which is actually labeled MC0. Use the D-pad to move the highlight to Yes and select it with X to continue. In this next submenu on screen, select Normal with the X button. Freemic Boot and its associated applications will be written to your memory card. Once the process is complete, you'll see a confirmation message on screen. Select OK with the X button to continue. You're done with the Freemig Boot installation process. You can now safely eject the free DVD boot disk from your PlayStation 2. You can also now remove your USB storage drive from your PlayStation 2. But do leave the memory card in place. I mean, making that thing was the whole point of the video after all. Turn off your PlayStation 2 and turn it back on and you'll be booted into Freemig Boot. But there's just one little problem here. There's nothing fun to do with this yet. Let's fix that. Check out this video to learn how to use that newly created Freemig Boot card to play your favorite PS2 games on a USB drive. I can't wait to see you over there.